Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Last week, I posted a live on YouTube about Donald Trump's COVID cocktail, which included melatonin, aspirin, famotidine, remdesivir, dexamethasone, vitamin D, zinc, all of these therapies I discussed on that day, how they would work in your body. Only a few of these therapies actually have evidence. Dexamethasone in patients that need oxygen has evidence and does positive things for people. Now, we know that he's been discharged from the hospital and has returned to the White House to begin his work on his campaign. Now, as far as how he was behaving in terms of getting in a car and riding around with people and waving, exposing people to SARS-CoV-2, yeah, I don't think that was smart. In terms of how he behaved even before he was admitted to the hospital, exposing people to SARS-CoV-2, I don't think that that was smart either. But I'm not here to be political. I'm here to be educational because I want you to understand some of the therapies that are involved in these clinical trials and how they interact with our body. Today, we're gonna to discuss some other therapies that are being studied in clinical trials and hopefully they'll be beneficial as some of these therapies may be. received uh, a special antibody therapy directed against the coronavirus. Let's go through this cocktail. What's the first medicine that we know for a fact that he's taking? Regeneron. What this is, is it's a product created by the pharmaceutical company Regeneron, which is located in a tiny town in New Jersey on the East Coast here. What you want to understand is it's a monoclonal antibody. In fact, this product that Regeneron has created is a combination of two monoclonal antibodies. They both inhibit spike protein. You've heard me discuss immunity before. You've heard me talk about developing antibodies to the spike protein, to the nucleocapsid protein, to other types of non-structural proteins, which we do. Most of the time, the antibodies that we develop are towards the spike protein and the nucleocapsid protein. So much so that when you look at the antibody tests, all of the antibody tests out there on the market are testing for antibodies against the spike protein and the nucleocapsid protein. So it makes you think, well, hey, wait a second. If antibodies neutralize the virus and antibodies bind to the spike protein, why can't we use monoclonal antibodies as therapies? Well, in fact, those are being studied too. So there are monoclonal antibodies directed at spike protein that are undergoing phase two and phase three trials right now as we speak. Now, what we know in the studies is that this medicine has reduced the amount of days that you're ill, I believe, and it's also maybe reduced fever. It's been more than 72 hours since his last fever. Oxygen levels, including ambulatory saturations and his work of breathing, are all normal. We all remain cautiously optimistic um, and on guard uh, because we're in a bit of uncharted territory when it comes to a patient that received the therapies he has so early in the course. Here is the thing in regards to really any kind of therapy. It's like, when do you give it? The problem I feel with some of these medicines and some of these trials is we give it to people who become severely ill. That's after all of the immune system is activated, after all of the organ failure has been initiated, it's really, really, really tough to cure people who become super severely ill. But no matter, they're giving patients standard of care, which is gonna include the antiviral agent remdesivir, in addition to probably decadron or dexamethasone, which we know works in patients who are on oxygen. Uh, yesterday evening, the president received his third dose of remdesivir. He tolerated that infusion without difficulty and his kidney and liver function continued to be normal. Our plan is to give the fourth dose of remdesivir this evening before he goes back to the White House, and we've made arrangements to deliver the fifth and final dose of his treatment course at the White House tomorrow evening. There's only three monoclonal antibodies that are approved in the United States for infectious diseases, but hopefully this will become one of them. Coronavirus causes significant respiratory failure. That is, your lungs fill up with fluid and white blood cells, and everything gets congested, so you can't take that deep breath 
and that's going to lead ultimately to significant morbidity and mortality. Recently in Houston, there was a 54 year old man who had received a double lung transplant for what's called rheumatoid arthritis interstitial lung disease. This is an autoimmune lung disease that I take care of. Rheumatoid arthritis can cause interstitial lung disease in 15% of patients. And most of those patients are gonna have a fibrotic type finding on their CAT scan. This leads to chronic respiratory failure and some of these people need transplants. This 54 year old had a lung transplant. So he's on heavy doses of medicines that try to calm his immune system down. He ended up having a cough and a runny nose and developed significant respiratory failure. His polymerase chain reaction, his PCR, the nasal swab was positive for SARS-CoV-2. He went into worsening respiratory failure and was almost about to die. He was given a dose of a medicine and within four days, this gentleman was off the mechanical ventilator. Fascinating stuff. The therapy that he was given was called avaptadil, which is an analog of a normal peptide in our body that's 28 amino acids called vasoactive intestinal peptide. And this peptide is present within the lung. As a matter of fact, 70% of VIP binds to the type two pneumocyte. So let's think about this for a second. What is the cell that gets injured the most in SARS-CoV-2? Well, it's the cell that SARS-CoV-2 binds to, which is the type two pneumocyte. It turns out when you look at VIP, VIP is a very, very, very potent vasodilator. In other words, it dilates the pulmonary arteries, allowing blood flow to continue. It's also a very, very, very potent bronchodilator, which means it allows the pipes that carry air to the lung to remain open. Furthermore, what has been discovered recently and it's published out of Brazil is that VIP levels are associated with survival. Now, VIP levels in patients who have severe respiratory failure as a result of SARS-CoV-2 are sky high. So what does that mean? That means one of two things. One, VIP causes disease, or two, VIP is necessary to get rid of disease. Based on the 54-year-old who was dying of respiratory failure until he received VIP, probably means VIP is necessary to get rid of disease. In fact, when you looked at this under the microscope, what we discovered is patients whose lungs had VIP present in abundance, SARS-CoV-2 could not replicate. If SARS-CoV-2 can't replicate, the infection can't go on. So when you look at this medicine, when you look at VIP analogs like Avaptadil that are approved in the United States for infectious diseases, but hopefully this will become one of them. Now it's under study. We're gonna discover if patients who receive Avaptadil or VIP perform better after having and suffering from respiratory failure. The third promising therapy, and this isn't really a specific medicine, this is a specific area of interest that I have. As I've discussed many times, when we think about SARS-CoV-2 and the structure of the virus, we know about the nucleocapsid protein, the membranous protein, the envelope protein, and the spike protein. But remember, there's non-structural proteins as well. And in fact, when you look at the literature, there are T cell activations that are directed at these non-structural proteins, one through 16. And so the question has become, when you look at some of these non-structural proteins, some of them are needed by the virus to survive. And so we're looking at certain inhibitors of these non-structural proteins. NSP4 inhibitors, NSP15 inhibitors are what we're looking at. And companies are developing these inhibitors because if we inhibit this non-structural protein, it's very possible that this virus can't survive. I don't have, to, I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever what seen. What does this say in regards to the statements about COVID Trump has made in the past? Hmm. Again, we know that President Trump 
likes to speak. We know that he likes to talk. And when you do that, you continue to say things that may or may not be true and may or may not be taken seriously. SARS-CoV-2 is a subject right now that is very sensitive to a lot of people. It has affected many people's lives, including people that I have to take care of tonight in the intensive care unit. Some of these people are going to die and it's unfortunate. But what is exciting is this advancement of science that we're seeing, looking at the immune system, looking at all of these different therapies, because although it's important to cure SARS-CoV-2 and to get through this pandemic, what might even supersede that is the next pandemic. So everything that we're doing right now is not only going to help us today, but it's also going to help us in the future. Thanks for being here today. I really appreciate you guys watching Medicine Deconstructed. Please subscribe, please hit the notification button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.